Well, this morning, we are introducing you to the most despised bird in human history. It's quite a big distinction for a little bird. This little guy, in fact, the house sparrow. The species is front and center in a new illustrated children's book, one that looks at the history of this bird, tracing it from its humble beginnings across continents and through time. It is called The Triumphant Tale of the House Sparrow, and its author and illustrator, Jan Thornhill, is joining us this morning. Good to have you here. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Love the title of the book, and I just, I want to show this to everybody, and I love when people illustrate a book where the pictures fill the page. And every page is like this. It's like just juicy, the colors. You want to, you want to eat it. Don't eat it, but you want to. <laughs> Why did you pick the house sparrow of all the birds? Uh, this is actually a companion volume to a book I wrote a couple of years, years ago called The uh, Tragic Tale of the Great Auk, which uh, is a story of extinction. Even though there were millions of great auks, they're gone. Uh, the house sparrow is everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's millions, billions of them. Uh, they're all over the world, despite the fact that people have tried to eradicate them since they first appeared. So tell us about what you were surprised to learn in your research of this bird. Well, sparrows are seed eaters, and uh, grains are seeds. And when humans started farming and we started growing grains, mm -hmm. Uh, the house sparrow evolved along with us. They went, this is great. These people are <laughs> growing what we eat. And they started living near us, and that's how, be, how they be, this ancient bird became evolved into the house sparrow. Uh, and they were f battling us for our grain. And so from day one, we tried to get rid of them. I love the lesson, too, of the little house sparrow, that, you know, when there's one or two of them, they don't seem like they take up a lot of space. But when, as you point out in this book, when thousands of them get together, they become a fearful force. Yeah, they used to. Uh, the house sparrow can have five broods of young a year, of five birds each time. So that's 25 new birds a year. Wow. Uh, and when the young are old enough, they sort of all gather together and they leave their, where they were raised and go to fields. So in the olden days when cities were smaller, they just flew a couple of miles outside the city to the, to the farms. And the city people never really knew how bad they were, but the farmers did. They were familiar. You know, I also love that you go back into ancient Egypt and you look at the role of the house sparrow there, which is fascinating. Uh, <clears throat> one of the, so we're all very familiar with regular human mummies, mm -hmm. but the Egyptians uh, mummified all kinds of animals as well, which were used as offerings to the gods. So people would, instead of lighting a candle, going and buying a candle and lighting that, mm -hmm. they would buy these little mummified falcons and crocodiles. Uh, so they, they had to raise falcons to huh. kill them, to mummify them. Wow. And they had to feed them, so they fed them fast multiplying animals, and one of them was mice, and the other was house sparrows. They've found with uh, modern uh, imaging technology the bones of a house sparrow inside one of these mummies. That is fascinating. I love in your book as well that you don't talk down to kids. You explain it like you would explain this story to an adult. Why is that important to you? Uh, because I hated being talked down to as a child. <laughs> I have a pretty good memory of what I was like then. And I mean, I wanted information then, and I think there's kids who want information now, and they don't want it dumbed down. Mm -hmm. So I use, I try to use interesting language and big words off and on, but I tend to explain what the word is in the sentence. Right. So, and then there's a couple of, there's a couple of strings of long words where I'm quoting what people were saying in the States uh, during the Sparrow Wars in the 1800s after they introduced the Sparrow into North America. And there were millions of them, and people wanted to get rid of them, mm -hmm. uh, and they called them irascible, irritable. Uh, I know. <laughs> so I, I had to do this string of words just because it was, I, I, I specifically say these were insults, so. <laughs> If kids don't know what the words are, they can look them up or they can... Ask their parents, have a conversation, right. go That's imagine right. that. Uh, you know, you also illustrate this book and the illustrations are fascinating. Uh, but you underwent some surgery uh, in the hand that you used to draw. You had to relearn how to draw. And what is different now about your illustrations? Um, okay, so I had a synovial sarcoma, a slow growing tumor in my arm that was, uh, uh, it was growing around a nerve. So it was very painful, sort of, so for about nine years, I couldn't draw. It just hurt too much. 
And then when it was finally properly diagnosed, I had the whole, it was an aggressive cancer. I had chemo and radiation and surgery where they took the tumor out and uh, took a piece of skin from here and put it here. And it's, it's a, it was a brilliant job. Um, <clears throat> in the olden days of, say, 1980, they would have cut my arm off. Wow. But now they do limb preservation surgery. And I only lost a couple of tendons in my thumb until I woke up from the surgery. I didn't know if I'd use my, have a, the use of my thumb anymore. Right. But I, I do. But the problem now is that, although I can do almost everything, when I hold a pen, my wrist locks. So I can't, I can't do the bigger movements sure. that I used to do. So I, I'm basically, I can do this. Uh, and I use a tablet and a stylus with yeah. the computer, and I, I blow up what I'm doing really close up yeah. on the computer, and then I do tiny little scribbles and little tiny squiggly lines. And, and I love that in the book. And then you, you make it small, and it looks like I know what I'm doing. Well, you so. do, and it's fascinating. A reminder to everybody, the book is called The Triumphant Tale of the House Sparrow. Great one to read with your family. Your morning will be right back. Don't go away.